There are different reasons why someone eats based on emotional needs. There's eating for sensory gratification, which is actually not just a normal part of eating, but a very necessary part. We all need to be eating to satisfy our taste, and that's because of the way that we've been designed to eat. Hey guys, I'm Joy Hoisington, Functional Nutrition Coach, and I have a surprise episode today in the Intuitive Eating series that I decided to add on as a bonus that is all about emotional eating, because I know it's something that so many of us and so many of my clients struggle with. So I thought I would do this video all about what are the different types of emotional eating and four different steps you can take to lessen the tendency to eat based on emotions. So how can we eat intuitively if we aren't even eating the foods that we like? We all have different taste preferences and it's important to become attuned to the foods and tastes that we want to be eating. Some examples are sweet, salty, crunchy, pungent, spicy, umami, sour, or bitter. Eating based on taste preferences is very important. And then there's eating for comfort. So we just covered the eating for sensory gratification. That is a 100% normal part um, of eating and a very necessary part, as I already said. The next type is eating for comfort. This is actually also normal to an extent, as long as, the, as food doesn't become your go-to method for coping with your emotions. I'm sure that you can all think of times in your childhood where you were served like hot soup when you were sick or on a really cold, cloudy day, or if maybe you got a treat after getting a shot or going to the dentist or doing something scary or brave. Even happy times such as holidays where maybe you were able to indulge in delicious home-baked goods and treats. In fact, tastes and smells have a way of helping us to access memories from our past. This is why comfort eating is so effective, but it can also become problematic for some. There's eating for distraction, which is when you are doing something that you don't really enjoy doing, but you have to do, or you have emotions that you don't feel super comfortable sitting with, so you distract yourself from them. For example, at work, or while doing chores around the house, or having to sit through a meeting. You may use food to help distract you before, during, or after doing those things. In fact, world-renowned expert in habit change, Dr. Gina Cleo, states on the 15-Minute Matrix podcast that the biggest trigger for behavior and habits is what you were doing right before, during, or after. She states that the environment shapes much of who we are and what we do. A lot of reasons that we do things is because we're making subconscious choices on autopilot, so to speak. You may find that before you go into a meeting, you eat a candy bar or two cookies, and that that's a habitual thing. Or that during the day at your desk, you munch on chips while you work. Eating for distraction, it can be problematic, but we all do it sometimes. We just have to figure out ways to sort of distract ourselves in, in, with healthier um, methods. Next is eating for sedation. This is when you want to numb your feelings, so you pig out on food until you're so full that you feel sleepy and out of touch with yourself. This is a very harmful thing to do, especially when it becomes a habit. It's sort of the same idea as getting smashed drunk until you pass out. This is the equivalent to using food like a drug. And then last, there's eating for punishment. This commonly happens when sedative eating becomes habitual. And then anger ensues as a result toward oneself. It happens with a full-on food addiction and it can be common with mental illnesses or unresolved trauma. If you deal with emotional eating, there are four steps to overcome it. So let's talk about those steps right now. Step one, ask yourself, am I hungry? This will help you to distinguish between true hunger and emotional hunger. Number two, what am I feeling? Some of the emotions that we experience can trigger emotional hunger. For example, boredom is a very common one. I know for myself, if I'm bored, I tend to think about what tasty food I can eat to cheer myself up. Some others are joy, love, anger, fear, loneliness, depression, or the desire for connection with other people. Like if you're out with people and they all want to eat, you want the full experience with them because food brings people together. So you might eat regardless of how hungry you actually are. Number three is to ask yourself, what do you need? Maybe it's some fresh air or a walk. Maybe it's a conversation with a friend or a loved one. Or a trip out to the store to get things off your mind. If you're busy at work, maybe you need to take advantage of the breaks that you're allowed to have. 
Instead of eating and working, maybe it's truly just a quiet time in the car for 15 minutes alone while having your lunch. Step four is to ask someone else to help. Let's face it, more often than not, life requires a village. Going through it alone pu puts a lot of stress on you and it makes it more difficult to navigate through life stressors without it taking a toll on you. As a Christian, I ask God daily in prayer to help me even in the most minute challenges and he comes through and extends his grace to me in those times. But I also think it's important to ask your children, your friends, your spouse and family members and even others in the church or in the community to help you out when you need it. Honestly, life is not easy. And the more that you let yourself process your emotions, tune into your true hunger and fullness cues on a regular basis and think about what non-food related options there are that you can take advantage of to center your mind and spirit, the easier it will be to have a balanced relationship with food. I know this is a very common topic of concern. If there are any other concerns that you'd like me to address in any of these videos, please comment below and let me know. So glad that you were able to watch this video. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.